Robert Pert's real name was Mohammed Kaba, and he was from West Africa, where he was before his being enslaved, an Islamic scholar and a Hafiz or someone who has memorized the Quran. After being enslaved, he wrote a slave narrative detailing his journey to the Caribbean and wrote many fiqh manuals and handbooks in order to teach a community of Muslim slaves how to pray and how to re-engage with their religion. He also wrote letters in classical Arabic to correspond with another enslaved man named Edward Donlan whose real name was Abu Bakr Sharif. Abu Bakr Sharif's story was very interesting as he belonged to a Sharif and family from Mali, Timbuktu, that traced their ancestry to Maulai Idris, the first king of Morocco, and from Maulai Idris back to the Prophet Muhammad wasallam himself. Upon the discovery of the Arabic documents written by these two enslaved Muslims, Abu Bakr Sharif was allowed to write a letter which was received by the king of Morocco who intervened and freed him from slavery, bringing him to live in Morocco with him for two years before sending him back to re be reunited with his family in Mali. Mohammed Kaba was not as fortunate as Abu Bakr Sharif and he remained enslaved, but his documents have survived and are still available to be seen in Jamaica today, showing that the legacy and history of Islam in the Caribbean spreads back for hundreds of years. We also have on the nearby island of Trinidad the story of Jonas Mohammed Bath, who became the Amir or Imam of the Society of Free Muslims in the island of Trinidad known as the Free Mandingo Society in the 1800s. He was an enslaved African man who managed to free himself from slavery along with 200 other Muslim slaves and establish their own society. They petitioned with the King of England and managed to purchase their own land in the Santa Cruz Valley in Trinidad.